Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. So, uh, my name is Francis Wallet. I'm uh, Associate Director of Informatics and Biocomputing here at the OICR, and uh, also one of the founding faculty of the Clean Bioinformatics Workshop Series, which we started 15 years ago, 16 years ago, um, 1999 in Calgary was the first workshop. And so, um, so I've been involved with the workshop uh, since then. There's actually one other uh, founding uh, faculty that's still involved with the workshops as well. It's uh, Dave Wishart at the University of Alberta. And so he's still involved uh, quite heavily. And as you know, we're doing new workshops uh, every year. And, and this year, one of the new ones we're doing is uh, the metagenomics workshop, which is, I think it was in show. I think it's full now, so next year if you want to join it. And the, and the videos will be online uh, at the end of the summer. So um, so some of you have been here for four days, and so, uh, so the week is, uh, is getting long. <laughs> and I uh, totally uh, appreciate how you guys are sticking it out, so that's really good. Um, this last uh, lecture and lab is going to be very, it's a bit of a mind shift uh, for all of you. So we're actually going to leave the command line and go to the graphical user interface and, and uh, learn some, some uh, a quite sort of powerful tool that's quite heavily used by many, many biologists uh, worldwide. And um, so without further ado, I'll get started. So as you know, uh, every presentation has a creative license uh, slide uh, in front of them, and that's a very sort of important uh, thing we started about uh, eight or nine years ago to make our material freely available to the, to the community. So you know you can download the, the slides and so forth, but there's some little catch here. probably the other faculty have been sort of uh, told you about. So. Uh, the Creative Commons license, or CC, there's, there are several that come in many, many flavors. And you don't really need a law degree to understand all the various flavors. But I'm just going to uh, indicate, so the two that we use, the two types of, of licensing we use in the CBW include um, CC BY, which means that you have to acknowledge who the thing, if you're going to use this material, you have to acknowledge where you got it from and uh, SA, which is share alike. And that's a really sort of sneaky thing we I stuck in there, which means that if you're gonna use these slides in your, in your presentations, you have to share your slides. That means you have to, to, to sort of pay it forward sort of thing. And so, yeah, so that's what the uh, uh, CC SA means. On top of that, I encourage people to blog, tweet and what have you, as long as you acknowledge where you got it from. So uh, today, so what I'm going to be doing is that we're going to be doing uh, a lecture on Galaxy, and then after that we'll have a lab on Galaxy where you'll be using it. And how many of you have ever used Gal Galaxy? How many of you have heard of it, but have never used it? So, all, yeah, okay. So uh, you'll get to use it quite extensively today. So this is my email address, so feel free to, if you have questions uh, later on after the workshop or later tonight as you're going home or <laughs> you want to ask me some more questions, feel free to, you can also follow me on Twitter. And I've been posting some things about uh, Twitter under the uh, hashtag um, informatics of high throughput uh, sequence data 15 for this workshop and put, it, put up the class picture and stuff like that. And People, so this is a, for those of you who are going to ever invent or name a software package, to use a name that's very, very, very common in the internet is not a really good thing. So if you Google Galaxy, you will not find Galaxy. You'll find other Galaxies, but not, <laughs> not the one. So if you get Google Galaxy Bioinformatics, you'll, you'll probably find it. But the hashtag that actually the, the Galaxy community uses all the time is use Galaxy. So if you Google use Galaxy, then you'll find uh, lots of resources about the Galaxy bioinformatics software package. So before I get started, I also want to put in a disclaimer. 
that I may I don't profit from any way, shape, or form from any of the brand products I may mention. I may mention Amazon. I may mention uh, Oxford, Natterport, whatever. Um, I don't profit from any of these companies, and I'm all I am on the scientific advisory board for Galaxy, but uh, they don't pay me, so I do that for free. So the outline today is I'm going to sort of show you, talk to you about workflows and how putting things together is important for reproducibility of science and so forth. Um, I'm also going to show you about all the various uh, variants of Galaxy and uh, how we can sort of put things together. I'm going to give you an example, a worked example of um, actually quite appropriate for this class for some of you, of an RNA-seq pipeline. And so we're not going to run the RNA-seq pipeline, but I'll show you that how, how to use it and how to you could do some of the things you did earlier this week in Galaxy. And uh, then we'll have, have the lab. So now I'm going to take a step back and sort of give you, sort of put this in, in, in the appropriate context. So what do biologists do? So biologists, they like to, you know, make observations, they like to make hypotheses, test them, challenge them, conclude things, and they, well, they don't necessarily like to write papers, but they have to write papers. <laughs> um, I don't like writing papers, but I write papers. Um, so we obviously we do things on RNA-seq, we do protein mass spec, we do interaction and pathway analysis, and we have a whole separate workshop on that. And basically, we're trying to understand biology, and as you all know, the central dogma of biology is DNA makes RNA makes protein, and then you write a paper about it. And so, um, and this really sort of, I, I, I did spend five years at the NCBI, and so I do have a sort of a biased view of the world and how biomedical information should be represented and so forth. And this is one of the central things that NCBI does in that they try to link the publications with the biomolecular data. And so it's a really sort of central sort of thing in how you can explain how things are. And a lot of the metadata, the data about the DNA, the RNA, and the proteins is actually in the papers. And so you have, if you have an easy way of going from the sequences to the papers, then you have a way of having a chance of understanding what was done and how it was done and so forth. And so this is really um, sort of some of the core of, of many of the things about reproducibility in science. And so, for example, if we're trying to do and trying to understand how things go in the cell, um, we have to do some, some of the things that we may have to do are, are wet lab uh, bench experiments, but we also, I like to think of bioinformatics as a dry lab experiment. So it's the same way you think about doing an experiment in the lab, you should think about it about doing an experiment in, in, in your computer. And so, and likewise, like you, I'm sure all of you that do wet lab work are trying to make sure that whatever notes you take and, and so forth, make, that, make it possible to reproduce those experiments that you do in the lab. And so likewise, we want to be able to reproduce the experiments we do on the computer. And so, um, so that's really sort of an important thing. For example, a classic sort of bioinformatics experiment would be to take a sequence to do a blast search and to look at the alignment. And so you have reagents, so you have your sequence that you're querying with, and you have your database you're searching against. You have a method, so you maybe you're doing a protein-protein comparison or, or translation of a nucleotide against a protein database or, or vice versa. And you get results and from which you have similarity scores and so forth, and you're testing a hypothesis. So that's it's all the makings of, of an experiment. And so it's important to know your reagents, it's important to know your methods, and it's important to know to do your controls. So what's an example for the blast search? Who has not done a blast search here? Just, okay. So those of you who haven't done one, you don't have to find the answer, you don't have to answer this next question, but the rest of you do. Um, so what's an example of a control you could do for a blast search? Oh? No, 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 actually, give me an example of what you would do 
to to do a control what's a control of an ex in an experiment in a blast search yes the similarity with the number of meeting rights if they use this bus for example yeah so what's a control what control are you doing so what do you why do you do controls why do you do controls So when you do an experiment, let me take a step back here. I think maybe my question is too complicated. It's a very simple question. When you do an experiment, you you get results. And so you want to make sure that the results you got are because of the experiment you're interpreting or interrogating the right thing. And then what you're seeing is not is not happening by chance. Or if what it is you're seeing, you do want to see as a as it's a result of the of the perturbation of the of the thing you did in your experiment right so let's say you do you grow cells and then you treat them and you're trying to see which rnas are coming up so what's an example of an ex a control in that experiment scramble the sequences scramble the sequences or you could just do the same treatment but you omit, so you have the, the, the solvent in which your, your drug is in, for example, but you omit the drug. And so you expect not to see anything, right? So that's an example of a control. So in a bio, so I'll repeat my question now. So in a bioinformatics experiment, what kind of control can you do, let's say in a BLAST experiment? If you're doing BLAST, what's an example of a control? So what, I'll, I'll tell you, because you're, sorry? Reference sequence. So, not sure. I understand, but so one example could be that you go look for a sequence that you know is in a database, and if you don't see it, then that's a problem, right? Likewise, if you know something that's not in that in a database, and you do a search for something, and you do you find a hit, but you know that's not it's not it because it doesn't exist. You you've you've done some random sequences. And then you search your database and you find a 100% match. That's probably that's a false positive, right? So there's that's a, it's an example of, of thinking about controls in a bioinformatics experiment. It's the same as what you have to do in a, in a wet lab. You have to assume you have to take into account your assumptions and and test them basically. So. One of the big sort of common themes between wet lab and dry lab is to, the, the ability to, to make things reproducible. And so that's really critical for um, when you do an experiment, that if, you, if I were to repeat the experiment, I would know how to do it, first of all. And second of all is I would get the same answer, right? If you do a search, and every time you do a search, you find a different sequence, that's not very, there's something weird going on. Likewise, um, I, I'm involved in a large scale analysis of cancer, gen cancer genome data right now. And we're actually doing lots of, of alignments of sequences using BWA like, uh, across many computers around the world. But and these are all separate, different instances of these computers. One control is to make sure that the computer doesn't modify your result. So you want to take the same data and put it at, say, at six different clouds around the world, and you want to make sure you get the same alignment. We actually did that control, and it worked. So that was <laughs> but initially it didn't, because BWA actually has a random, uh, uh, randomly, so if a, a, an alignment can go in one of two places with the same quality score, it puts it in one time it puts it there and the second time it puts it there and then when you do checksums and do to see if a byte by byte the two alignments are the same you actually get different answers so there's a way of pushing bwa to always go to the first one it finds and then it does find it does generate exactly the same answer but these are things you have to think about okay if i'm doing this twice or if i'm doing it on two different computers that have different amounts of memories or or whatnot is that going to affect my result and so it's really things to, to think about. And so it's really important when you do a bioinformatics experiment to actually track 
everything about your experiment. So the kind of computer you're doing on, the version of the software tool you're using, which parameters you're using, and so forth. And so that's some of the things that uh, people have to, to keep in, in mind here. So some of the important things for many of these pipeline things is it should be open source, which allows not only it's, it's not, it takes the sort of the black box component out of it. Um, it should be used by, if it's got a large user base, that's more likely to, to have uh, things figured out and, and make the, the code base sort of more robust and so forth. Um, if there's a big sort of user community supporting it and helping each other, that's very useful. Flexibility, uh, being expandable is for a, a pipeline sort of type tool is, is really useful. And um, if it can work on the cloud, that's good. I mean, you've seen the advantages of, of working in the cloud this week. And, um, and ideally, especially for biologists, if it's user friendly, so much the better. So there are s several sort of uh, tools that are like that. One that you've used this week, for example, would have been R and Bioconductor. And R, at its core, had the ability to trace and capture every step, every parameter, and so forth uh, that you do in an experiment. And um, Robert Gentleman, in this paper, uh, argues that um, every figure of every paper you've ever done should come with an R script that explains, that generates the same figure. That, so you should have the script included with the paper so that you, if you use that script, you can, will, you'll be able, with the, his data, or the data that's in the paper, you'll be able to reproduce a figure that's in the paper, exactly. And if that's available, that makes the whole thing sort of reproducible. So it's a really sort of um, core thing about, about this paper. Another uh, recent paper is uh, from actually some of the folks that, that did um, Galaxy is about 10 simple rules on reproducibility. And those rules are, sometimes you have to, to, to think you know, am I, am I going to be able to do that? So for every result, keep track of how it was produced. I mean, it's sort of basic. You know? Bench scientists sort of have no qualms about that. And they take copious amounts of notes and make sure. But likewise, for a bioinformatics experiment, you should do the same thing. Um, avoid that step in the middle where you have to go do something and then to make it go to the next step. So you, if you can script everything, if you can't, or, or write detailed notes of what it is you did each step so that you can reproduce it. Um, archive the exact version of all experimental external programs used. And so if you generate, if you need a special version or whatever version of, of uh, Python or Perl or whatever it is you're using to, to do a script or whatever, you should make sure you have a copy of that so that if somebody you know, a year from now says, well, I've tried to do your experiment. It's not quite working, you know, like you did in your paper. So you can say, well, which per which version of Python were you using? So oh, I was using blah, blah, blah. I said, well, you should use this one, and here's a copy of it. And so if you have that available, then you can you can make that possible. Um, record all intermediate results, and when possible, in a standardized format. That's pretty hard, actually, because uh, bioinformatics loves loves to invent formats and to tweak formats and to modify things and so forth. So that's the goal, but it's, it's sometimes it's, it's a bit difficult. Uh, GFF has, I don't know how many versions, and people write, okay, well, write a GFF file, but they actually don't know which version of the GFF file format you've written, and then you go in and use it, and it doesn't, it's not quite working because it's got an extra column and so forth. Um, as I mentioned earlier, so for analysis that include randomness, uh, note the underlying uh, random seed. So usually, like a program like BWA, it does have a random seed, so you can fix it so that if you then makes it possible to uh, to reproduce exactly the, the data. Always uh, store raw data behind plots, like the example I gave you about uh, with R. Uh, generate um, article analysis outputs allowing layered of increasing details to be inspected. So uh, I'll show you an example of that in Galaxy, which is basically um, uh, if you're going to 
have your your data you can for example you could put as you you may have done this week is to have things in directories within directories so you keep the, the hierarchy of how you obtain the, the data as, as the experiment moves along and um, so and connect textual statements with the underlying result that's another feature of galaxy is that throughout all your notes and your experiments in galaxy you can actually write a note and say on this part, I, I modified this parameter because it works better, blah, 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 and so forth. And you can say where uh, often Galaxy puts invents names for a step and, or for an output file. It's probably always, it's always a good idea to go back and, and actually say not the automated version of the output file, but the, the one that makes more sense to you so that you'll be able to understand it later on. Um, and uh, the most uh, important one is, is to provide public access to scripts, runs, and results. And so that means that if somebody reads your paper and, for example, you've detailed all this information, they will be able to reproduce your experiment because they will have all the reagents, all the, 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 the things you use to do your experiments. Okay? So the same way you, you will describe, you know, where, which vendor got you this restriction enzyme or from where cell line or this cell line that you're using in your experiment, you, you have to put the, those kinds of details around software things as well. So I'm going to talk about Galaxy, but it, Galaxy is only one uh, player in, in the world of sort of pathway and pipelines and so forth, and uh, pipe, pipeline uh, uh, organizing tools. Um, another one that's much more um, uh, it's less user friendly and it's more robust to do larger scale. Uh, it, one is, is called Sequare, which is one we use here at the OICR in our software group. And um, it's not for the faint of heart, but it is much more robust and much more scalable than, uh, than um, Galaxy can be. Although Galaxy has done a lot of improvements in the last year uh, to make it uh, so you can do, for example, the same Galaxy pipeline against a thousand files if, if you want to. So that's possible now in Galaxy. So the solution I'm going to talk to you about today is, is, is Galaxy. And um, there's lots of papers about it. There's uh, this one in genome biology and this one in um, uh, current protocols. All of these are open access documents. So even though Current Protocol is a uh, is more of a commercial product, this specific chapter was actually made uh, open access. So when you start, uh, there are several ways to start Galaxy, and there are several versions of Galaxy out there. And so uh, the homepage for for the Galaxy project is galaxyproject.org. Uh, the homepage for the public server the Galaxy public server, which is the one referred to as main, is at usegalaxy.org. And there's also, um, you can actually also download it on your own server, and you can also, there's a cloud version, and there's actually a number of, of public versions as well. So, so which one's the best for you? So the, um, just, uh, <coughs> state by the microphone so the um, if you if you have so moderate size data sets you can use it so so the public version actually is quite uh, good in that it's uh, it's, it's quite it's, it has a few hundred cores of CPU behind it it has um, an up-to-date list of tools so you can think of a uh, Galaxy instance as a place where tools have been installed and so the Galaxy main or the usegalaxy.org, the public one, has got most of the most recent uh, tools installed in it so it makes it for a very convenient one. The um, one challenge with the public server is that it's public <laughs> and so that means there's lots of people using it and uh, they, Galaxy right now is about 50,000 plus registered users. Fortunately, they're not all there right now, this afternoon. 
but uh, there are 50,000 people that have registered to use the Galaxy. And they give you somewhere, if I remember correctly, I think uh, a couple hundred gigs of free space. So you can have uh, up 200 gigs of, of files up there if you, if you want. It is not considered a, it's, it's your private space, but uh, it's not impossible to, for people to, uh, to break into it and so forth. So if you have confidential, uh, especially let's say human data, it's probably not the best place to, to put it on. And so that way, one, one solution there that people have, come, have done is they want to use Galaxy, but they would install it on their own personal server. As I'm sure has been told a few times this week, um, personal servers are not necessarily the safest uh, computers. Uh, Amazon is actually considered, I consider Amazon um, more secure than, than most uh, university servers uh, by, by a landslide. That said, as we saw this week, you can configure things in a way that it makes it very open and very publicly accessible. So we did that this week because to make it easy for you guys to use the resources. But uh, if you're worried about security and you're worried about uh, protecting your data and so forth, then you have to, you have to be mindful of all the, the security uh, documents. And I think uh, Malachi and Obi earlier this week had a, pointed out to a document on there uh, in the RNA seq workshop for those of you that were there, they pointed out to a document that sort of highlights uh, how to configure your server to, to make it more secure. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, so for example, the main, if you have really large data sets, the main is probably not the best idea. So the, as I mentioned, galaxyproject.org is, is a homepage. So, on, so you'll have access to using Galaxy or getting Galaxy, i.e. getting Galaxy and installing it in your own server. Um, how to, lots of linkage to the uh, tutorials and, and there's lots of uh, videos and so forth. And, and also there's a wiki page that has um, lots of ways of getting involved and, and understanding and, and so forth. The, um, so also Malachi and Obi talked about, uh, by, and I think Michelle as well, about Biostar. And actually the folks, so the, the, the folks at Galaxy, actually one of them, one of the PIs is at an institution in the US, which was the, where the Biostar software was started. So they actually have a, a, they have their private instance of Biostar so that they have all the Galaxy material on Biostar. So it's, you're not searching all of Biostar, you're searching the Galaxy version of Biostar. And so they, they've limited to, to that data set, but they have all of their material available there. And, and it's, it's quite uh, rich and, and lots of information. And likewise, if you go there, then you don't need to, um, uh, you don't, you should look for the answer of the question you're thinking about before asking it yourself. So this is the Use Galaxy. This is where we'll be going later today. And I'll, I'll spend some time uh, describing the various parts. This is the um, Get Galaxy. So this is a page you, to get the software to download and install it. So you can install it. There's a couple of different ways of installing it. The two main ones are on a single box. So you can actually install it on a laptop or on a, on a more sort of robust server. But you can also install it sort of in front of a cluster so that it can, can be configured and use all the powers of a cluster. And so for an institution, like a university, it actually makes quite a lot of sense for them to install an instance of Galaxy for their user base and, and their bioinformatics community within the university. And many of them have done that. And so and I'll talk about those a bit later. Um, we talked, so Cloudman is sort of the software infrastructure to, to, to use Galaxy in, in the cloud. And so there are, there's an, you can get a, an AMI, an Amazon uh, machine instance that has Galaxy in it. So you can use Galaxy uh, graphical user inter interface, but it's actually on Amazon. So there are ways of doing that. And there are other cloud providers, non-commercial non and academics cloud providers that also uh, use uh, Galaxy. And so I mentioned, Oh, there's a 60 plus 
sort of uh, Galaxy servers out there, so various institutions that have making their data and their software available through a Galaxy instance. So the challenge there is that this instance will be sort of uh, put together to, uh, to address the needs of a certain community. And so there might be some uh, weird organism or some weird, uh, some specialized software, like there's a mass spec Galaxy instance. For, so people that do mass spec analysis, they can go onto that server and they have mass spec tools. So most of the tools then are, are specialized for, for that area of bioinformatics. But that's a good place to, to go look for and see if there's one or, or more than one that has the kinds of tools uh, you need. For example, there is one I know there's a few that do sort of RNA seq analysis, for example. So, um, <clears throat> so one of the things, the great things that Galaxy does is is it puts, uh, it integrates uh, inputs of of various data sources. So there's a way, there's lots, there's on the left panel you have all the the various inputs uh, from a various number of sources that you can imagine in addition to, of course, things coming in from your own computer. Um, likewise, uh, the Galaxy, so the usegalaxy.org, so the, the main one, has a number of tools that are pre-installed so you don't have to worry about installing the latest version or what have you. They're there now and you can just select and use them and, and, and go about doing your experiments. Although you saw uh, this week, so installing tools and so forth is, is pretty straightforward, but sometimes if you don't have the environments right and, and so forth, you can spend a lot, many hours sort of figuring out, you know, which library am I missing and, and so forth. So Galaxy folks have, have, have taken that away, uh, taking that concern away from you. Um, one of the big things that Galaxy does, and it's really sort of the main reason why you should use Galaxy even if you're a sort of command line pro and you love the command line and you never want to touch a graphical user interface, at the end of your experiment, it's actually a really good way to share your parameters and your tools with the community. So if you do write a paper, you can actually put the whole workflow in a sort of Galaxy paper page type uh, unit and publish that, make that public a URL public and include that in your publication and you tell people, this is how I did my experiment. And your Galaxy workflow will take into account, uh, could take into account the data, the tools, the parameters, the versions, and, and all, all those things, and how you did the various steps and so forth. So if you capture that into a workflow, then you're able to, to share that with the world and it makes your paper much more uh, reproducible. There are even journals that will store that for you. Um, journals specialize in big data and so forth, like uh, Giga Science and whatnot, will host your workflows, your Galaxy workflows, and so they have a they have a Galaxy server, and they'll put they'll they'll put your your workflow. But there are lots of different ways of within, for example, using the the main server, you can make your your workflows publicly available there. Um, so, like I said, you can publish an experiment on Galaxy, and um, Initially, so Galaxy is about, uh, I'd say, 10 plus years old, and so it was actually started before next-gen sequencing was sort of on the landscape. And so a lot of the tools in Galaxy have nothing to do with, with uh, next-gen sequencing. But um, it was it powerful enough, and it was robust enough, and they, and they did the tweaking they needed to do to make it work. But it also now the bulk of the work that Galaxy does is actually and data. And so the ability to do the things you've been doing for the last four days is, is basically all possible within the Galaxy sort of uh, main uh, format and, uh, and it's uh, also available in the cloud because if you want to have more, you want to put more horsepower behind it, that's a really sort of convenient way of doing it. And so one of the, I would say, I'm I was going to say, I'm not a Galaxy evangelist. Actually, I think I am. <laughs> so one of the, I, I, I think the guys are doing a great job. So yes, I, I am an evangelist, but I don't like the term evangelist. But anyway, that's another discussion. Um, but you get my idea. Uh, the, um, 
one of the cores of why things have developed the way they are in Galaxy is that they believe in reproducibility. So the, the two PIs, uh, James and Anton, are, are that's sort of what drives them every day is making a better tool where it will make it reproducible and make it uh, possible for people to come back several years later and to re repeat that, that experiment. Um, so the, very good at keeping history to a point where you know you repeat a step two or three times because you got it wrong or somewhere. So it keeps all those steps. So if you, you have to sort of go clean things up eventually sometimes because you have a lot of, of things that it keeps uh, with, with you. And uh, it's also very easy to to do something and share with one colleague or share with the world or share with 10 colleagues or whatever and notify them that things have, have changed or, and so forth. So if you want to, if you're working in, in say New York and you have a colleague in Vancouver and or vice versa, then you can sort of uh, email to each other, okay, I updated the pipeline, you want to have a look at it, then you can log in and then you'll see the pipeline that your colleague worked on and so you can work on it that way. Um, <clears throat> the if it wasn't clear yet, but I think this one's not a big of a surprise. It, Galaxy was designed with a biologist in mind, so it's not for computer scientists. It's not for a software developer, except if you're developing modules to put in Galaxy. But it's uh, really uh, meant as a sort of easy user interface to go do things, and it's a little frustrating, I would say, from especially even for people like yourselves this week now, because you know how to do it quickly, sort of go grep and count how many lines it has, you know, such and such a string in it. There are ways to do that in Galaxy. You have to pull down some menus and write down some words and tell it to count second column and, and so forth. And so that is all doable through Galaxy, but you could do it much quicker, much more quick today, now, not on Monday, but today <laughs> you can do it much more quickly at the command line. Yes, Michelle? Wednesday, Wednesday. Wednesday what? This class. But some of these people were here on Monday too. So, yes. Monday or Wednesday. But yes, thank you, Michelle. Um, and so also, Galaxy is a healthy developer community. And so one of the things, because it's an open source package, and, and so there's lots of people working on it. And one of the things that they encourage is that when you have for tool developers to actually develop a, uh, a galaxy version so like let's say i have a new um aligner for for short reads one of the things i could do to make to have more people in the community use it is to actually wrap it in galaxy so that people then would see it in a galaxy menu oh there's my favorite tool and this tool could be a, a it could be a C program, it could be a Perl script, it could be anything. So there's all sorts of there's all sorts of different ways. R, for example, is part of Galaxy. So there's all sorts, it could be an R script and so forth. Um, so it's an NIH funded project. It's a uh, um, it's well supported. It's actually now a NIH um, U41, I think it, it is. So it's a sort of a, a community tool uh, support. So it's going to be around for, for a while. So one of the challenges um, with uh, the, the multiple sites I mentioned where they have uh, various instances is that not all galaxies are created equal. Um, and what they're going towards and is happening more and more often now is to basically ship Galaxy is an empty shell. So the usegalaxy.org is not an empty shell. It's got all the tools uh, and, and then some. But if you, you can download Galaxy that's basically tool free. And what you then need to do is you need to go to the tool shed and get your favorite tools. And so then you have this menu of, okay, these are all Galaxy wrapped tools. This is the one I was just referring to for, for developers to be able to put tools there and then install them in their own version. So this is when you're running not the use Galaxy version, not the AMI that's uh, on, on Amazon, although you could do that as well there with a little administration. But this is if you're going to install your institutional version of Galaxy, you will then go to the tool shed and get your favorite tools. And you can make 
you can get all the tools or you can get a, you know specific tools for dealing with for example uh, NGS data or you can get tools to deal with RNA seq data and so forth and so if you look up SAM then you'll see a bunch of tools that have related to uh, SAM tools and, and whatnot that are uh, read SAM files and so forth and so you can you know, it gives you an idea of of how that could work so the general workflow in Galaxy is that uh, you log into the system and when you log in what that does is that for example your history of what you've done is then remembered so if you log back in then it has the, 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 the it, mem it remembers you and it keeps track of the things you've done and so until you, you clear it and so forth so logging in although you can use Galaxy without logging in but if you log in then you get a bunch of perks one of which is the history and memory of what you've done, but also the ability to share with other people because you have to know, so you do it as sort of a peer-to-peer -peer sort of exchange of, of information. You then get data or you upload your, your data. So you can get data from UCSC, for example, or you can get data from various sites, or you can have data, like I said, on your own computer. You then manipulate, you do things to your data, you do experiments. Uh, you repeat the experiments, you do it a few times, and then uh, you save your output. And then all of that becomes um, uh, an, a pipeline, a workflow, and then you can publish the whole pipeline, which includes the data from some your, your own data or from a, a server, and you can put that into a, a Galaxy page. So Galaxy in the cloud actually looks exactly the same, except what, as any other different Galaxy, is that uh, you'll have different tools present on, on, on the server. So this is a, an example of some of the tools that are present in both the, the, the public server and the, um, the cloud version. And some of the tools that are missing, they're present in one, but not in the, only in Galaxy Cloud versus only in Galaxy, usegalaxy.org. So there's a bit more, I find, although the Galaxy Cloud version, I haven't started recently, but it, it seems to be a bit behind and not having the same up-to-date tools as the, as the usegalaxy.org has. And so uh, all the, the tools in Galaxy have a short description of what it is they do and what they're used for. And at the top left panel is where you, in the left panel in Galaxy page is where your tools are and your data. And so that, that list is so long, it's actually collapsed. And so it's sort of compressed a little bit when you look at it first, but it's such a, when you know where you're going to go get whatever it is you need to, to get, that's fine. But the, often the best, best way is to just look for it. So you know you're looking for, um, what was the one you did today? Uh, fast QC. Um, so you do the QC on, on, on fast Q files. And so that tool's there. So you look that up and, 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 and you find it right away. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, so like there's, like I said, there's another example of tools that are different on the different servers. So one of the great things about Galaxy is that it's fully integrated with the UCSC genome browser. And the UC genome browser, UCSC genome browser is fully integrated with, with Galaxy. So they can send things to each other. So you can do a search, let's say for all the genes in a certain version of the human genome, and you can output that as a GFF or a GTF file to Galaxy, and so on, and vice versa. So it's a really sort of uh, useful and so um, that makes it simple to, to, to look things up and, and get data sets. And so if you want a part of a chromosome and things like that, that's very uh, very easy. And UCSC outputs things as you know in a graphical output, but it also likes to output things in, in table format. And that's actually the format that Galaxy likes to consume. And so if you want to read or generate, let's say, uh, all the SNPs from chromosome 22, and you want that in a, in a format that can then be uh, brought into uh, Galaxy, uh, that, that is possible. And another thing that's possible also is that Galaxy talks to IGV. So you can actually have 
things in Galaxy, then you want to output it and you want to see the output in IGV, and that's also possible. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. So, um, so these are some just some of the examples of file formats that uh, UCSC likes to output. Fast A, you know very well, it's basically just a greater than sign, some descriptor, and then a sequence, and nucleotide or protein. Uh, bed format, which is a browser extended uh, file format, extended data format, which is used for by the browser to represent various things in various ways. So again, uh, if you output sort of chromosome, start position, uh, stop position, some ID, and some score, and so forth, then you can output it in bed format. GFF has, uh, as you can see, can't even see my computer, so it has all the Sequence names, the source, the feature, the start, and score, strand, frame, and group. So that's sort of standard GFF format with the specific versioning and so forth and explained on that page. And GTF is basically a simplified GFF, but only deals with coding sequence, so gene features, and uh, has an extra field, which is the... Um, the name of, of the identifier, something like, for example, would be an ensemble ID name. So that would be part of the of the GTF file format. So, um, as I mentioned, so one of the big things that's quite special. So even if, like I said, even if you do your whole experiments from the command line, at the end to be able to to do the control of reproducing it yourself in Galaxy. Is, it would be quite the accomplishment, and the and that becomes a great way of sharing it in, in, in a publication. And so, um, if you go to Galaxy, you can actually look and see published pages there. So the, there's obviously the Galaxy staff have, have put up many pages there and make it available for you to reproduce the things that they've done, and, it's, and they've been involved with a number of papers, and so they've included those in there. But there's also people that want to make uh, made things public from their own publication, make it available on, on this sort of published uh, pages within Galaxy. And what you get then, you can crowdsource, and if you have certain pipelines and certain workflows that you like, then you can sort of give it, if you're logged in, then you can sort of say, you can start and say, okay, yeah, that one's really good, I'm gonna give it five stars. That one is not so great, I'm gonna give it a couple of stars. Then so you can see other people's ratings and then you can see oh, there appears to be this great RNA seq workflow for example that the people that the community likes and, and so maybe that's a good one to look at and of course you then get uh, certain people uh, that uh, uh, are doing great workflows and they, and they sort of become they get badges and you know they become superstars and whatnot and so Jeremy is actually one of these people He's actually part of the Galaxy team as well, but he's really keen about it. He's done a lot of work about RNA-seq. And so I'm going to just, I don't want you guys to do this right now, but I'm just going to give you an example of, of um, RNA-seq analysis. And so what they've done here is uh, Illumina has actually put out this uh, RNA-seq with data set of, of uh, of sort of special localized, you know, not like good sort of data sets for teaching and whatnot. And um, from many uh, body parts from, from the human body. And so uh, they have uh, things from a 500 KB region from chromosome 19 that has uh, about um, three, three and a half million, uh, uh, sorry that has a few million sort of uh, RNA secretes. So that's the body parts where it comes from, it comes from the brain and from the uh, adrenal gland. So for those of you who are not biologists, you need to know where the brain is or the adrenal gland. This is your map. Um, so what you first do is you log in. Uh, if you've never logged in before, then you have to register. If you've uh, and actually, this part, I should put a note in your notebook right now if you're using uh, the paper version. Just bend the corner of the page. I'll ask you to do that before we go on coffee break. So we'll go, after my lecture, we'll go on break before we start the lab. But I'll ask you to do this, if you've never logged in, to 
Galaxy. I'll ask you to do that before the coffee break, and then when you come back from coffee break things, you'll be logged in. So if you're a new user, then you have to put in your name, your email address, and so forth. And uh, Or if you're a returning user, then you just log in. And once you're logged in, then you type the user tab. It will look like this and that. You will see, uh, you'll see, look at, I want to see my saved history or my saved pages and, and so forth. Which is, is, that is sort of and the logout button and so forth. So that's an indicator that you, you are logged in and uh, you have access to all that information. So in the case where we're doing right now is we're actually going to, in this uh, sample I'm explaining to you right now is RNA from, so paired end reads from uh, one set of paired reads from adrenal gland, the other from the brain. Um, and so the first thing you want to do is you want to get data. And so for to get data is the first item on the left panel. And um, you uh, basically copy a URL and it's one of the ways to get data into a galaxy. And then Galaxy has this very um, convenient sort of uh, shade uh, shading. So the first, when you enter a command, initially it's sort of gray, which means it's it's still hasn't gone to the um, to the computer yet. There's a server, and it's on its way. <coughs> Yellow means that it's there, but it's has it's queued up to be done, so it hasn't done anything yet. And then green it means that the job is finished. Uh, red is not good, as you can imagine. So red means you gave it a wrong argument. Uh, the file didn't work. The process in question didn't work for. There's lots of different reasons why that could happen. And blue is usually points to a, a, a data file. And so this is here. I'm. I'm. Uh, and each of these commands have three things next to them, always. So um, there's an I, there's a pencil, and an X. So the I, I refer to it as poke the I, and so if you poke the I, you click on the I, so you poke the I, you get, that's a way to go look at the data. Uh, edit, uh, with the pencil, edit the attribute, that's a way of, of taking notes, and where you, add, you can add notes about the, that step, or you can rename files that are gonna be the output, or the input, and so forth, the way and you can delete a, a step. And here I put an arrow just saying, if you did this and you did it three times, you, these are the steps at which, so this is not one, two, uh, four, seven, means that I'm not showing you three and four that failed or, or five or whatever. And so these numbers on the left-hand side is just a chronological order of, of your steps, but it may be uh, different uh, for, for you. These uh, may vary with usage, basically. So if you poke the eye, so if you're looking at a FASTQ file, then you'll you'll get to see the FASTQ. So in the in middle pane, you'll see the uh, the uh, the file, the data file that you're looking at, whatever that data file. If it's a text file, it'll show it to you. If it's not a text file, it'll either encourage you to use a, a graphical user interface, or to um, or to not show it to you because it's, it's a binary code or some of like that. Um, the edit attribute button, so it gets you, so here I rename this file, sort of brain one, fast Sanger, and this is where the original file was named, and so that's, I'm keeping that there, and, and so forth. So this is a really sort of reorganized, I don't delete anything that's usually here, I usually move it to notes or whatnot, but this is where I, re, the name file is going to be something that I'm going to recognize later. It won't be like results of experiment of step two. So it would be a sort of an example of how the machine would sort of automatically name that file. And so it's not going to be results of step two. It's going to be what what you know it is to be. So that way, when later on, when you need that file, you're not going to look for results of step two. You're going to look for the file of the body part or the sample experiments you've done or whatnot. Um, so. The, uh, so in general, so tools, uh, you'll read in a, f a file, you'll, um, uh, so, and it will show you the files usually that are compatible with that tool. 
so you it'll protect you a little bit from from only uh, doing things that you can do. Um, it it's not perfect logic, but it, it works most of the time. So it's if you can't see it, that means there's it might be some uh, some formatting problem. Uh, FastQC we saw earlier today, uh, so it's available through um, through uh, uh, Galaxy, and so there's a text version of the output. There's a graphical we saw the graphical output version of it. And uh, there's also you can delete it if you want, uh, if you did use the wrong file name or what have you. And then um, so here's an example of file name. So it's fastqc on data eight uh, raw data. So it's a, it's an example of of the file name quickly sort of getting sort of uh, confusing and not very informative. So then you would use the edit button and you would rename rename that file. So this is like um, all the files that have been groomed. The, the grooming step in Galaxy is often about changing from the old Illumina uh, standards to the new Illumina standards, and it just it's a it's a like a byte shift because they're using a 32-bit code versus a 64-bit, and so they just shifted the, the letters up, and so. Some tools only work with the old ones. Some use with the old ones. So you have to use, you have to groom your files to to allow uh, the tools to, to be uh, used in the specific pipelines. Um, for example, removing bases because you want to remove things that are of uh, lower quality is is possible. Uh, here's an example of using uh, Top Hat. Um, and so the top hat is one of the tools that's in on on the server. And uh, for this experiment, we know that the the 110 base pairs between the reads, and so that's a parameter that you would need to put in. And so all of these things are 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 sort of clickable or inferable in, into these forms. And then uh, you run this. This actually takes about 30 minutes to run on these four files and on the public server. And um, so it's yellow, then it goes green when it's done. And, and then so you have um, an example here of all the, sort of the output from the top hat experiments. And then in Galaxy, you actually have two sort of graphical viewers. You have a sort of a standard, what well, was standard? It's not standard in a sense. It's Galaxy specific, but it's a, Standard in the way that you're used to seeing the data, which is basically based on tracks and 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 so linear sort of coordinates from left to right, and so you can see RNA or, or whatever experiments you're doing in, in Galaxy. It also has a um, a circular plot uh, a, a viewing also for translocation, like the things that we did uh, earlier with uh, some of uh, Guillaume's data. So that's the sort of standard viewer. And then he has the ability to share. So you can, like I mentioned, you can publish and share it with your colleagues or with the world. So it has sort of those two colleague slash colleagues. So you can share with a number of people or one or more, or keep it private, or share with a group of people, or share with the world. So it's sort of classic sort of Unix uh, sort of three types of, of, of groups. And you can sh share. Uh, history and 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 oops, sorry. So you can share history. Uh, where am I? Uh, and you can also uh, extract workflow. So like I mentioned, when you do experiments, sometimes some steps work and some don't, and so forth. So when you extract a workflow, it extracts all the steps. Then you go and select which ones you want to pick. And extract into your workflow. These are the ones that, that I want to keep. These are the ones I want to rerun on the next data set, and and so and that's and this is the one. These are the ones I want to share uh, with with the world or with my colleagues or what have you. So it also has a workflow uh, graphical user interface, so that if you can you can go edit workflows this way, and basically all the the strings, the curves that link up boxes together 
are basically data sets you're giving you're doing a step on it and so forth all of these things you can are come out once you extract a workflow but you can also then go edit this and you can change file names and so forth so it's, it's quite uh, uh, flexible uh, from from that point of view so as you start getting familiar with Galaxy and then you think it's a, it's a cool project and so forth that you want to share with your colleagues, remember there's lots of videos, tutorials, mailing lists, Twitters and so forth that allow to, um, to look at stuff. Uh, for example, uh, there's a, uh, the Galaxy project, the Vimeo channel. Um, so we are this week, last two days you looked at, uh, uh, variant calling, structural variant calling, and so forth. There's a Galaxy tutorial on ChipSeq, and so we actually uh, we're going to introduce that. Actually, do a workshop on ChipSeq and, and and epigenomic analysis, uh, probably starting next year. So a new workshop to, that's in the plans right now. And so, uh, but there's already if you want to get you want you have some things you you have some data sets you want to work with. Maybe you have a look uh, for Chipsy, have a look at the Galaxy video and then you can get started right away. Um, uh, Jeremy's also got uh, looking, it's got a, a page on how to use Trackster, which is this uh, graphical user uh, tool, which is uh, makes it quite uh, simple to use. Um, this is at the end, is actually another advisory board I'm on. <laughs> It's a genome space, which is another tool uh, out of the broad uh, that links up many tools together. So I mentioned UCSC, Galaxy, um, Cytoscape, um, IGV, which is another uh, tool from the broad, and many others are basically all hooked up. And so you can go to the genome space and there are, they've got tutorials on how to hook up that tool to that tool. And basically what Genome Space does is it doesn't show you, it doesn't tell you how to use that tool. It assumes you know how to use tool X, but what it shows you is how to get data from tool X into tool Y. And so the steps, and then basically it's they're, they've added each tool through the Genome Space interface or through the tool now, you can sort of output, the output of one tool becomes the input of the next tool. And so it makes that very convenient. So uh, other useful resources, uh, Galaxy, there's a, a Twitter account, there's a support, the Biostar I mentioned for Use Galaxy is available. There's Biostar itself, which has, of course, lots of, uh, of things as well as you, um, and if you follow them on Twitter, they're basically all the stuff that, there's a pretty heavy feed of all the things that comes on, on Biostar. I did not talk about Open Helix, but they're basically, Think they're still around and they're a commercial company that makes sort of uh, support material to help bioinformatics and they actually had a contract from UCSC browser to make all the material for training on how to use the UCSC uh, material so they make all of that free online but they have other material that they sell uh, UCSC itself has also a number of tutorials online there's, uh, we mentioned Biostar, the other big one and, and of particular interest to, to this class is Seek Answer, which is basically an answer uh, discussion board for everything related to next-gen sequencing. And so it's a really uh, good place also to go and look and see if you have questions or, uh, about, uh, about next-gen uh, technologies. That said, I think the best one right now is Biostar. And it's the one I encourage you to go check first. So these are some of the papers I mentioned uh, throughout uh, my talk. I encourage you to look at them. And now we're going to be on break. Uh, 